Basically, it's my project was designing interchangeable spike plates for track and field shoes. So <clears throat> this is an upper for a shoe, and this is a spike plate. Basically, um, a lot of times, overuse of the spike plate will cause it to become really dull. When it gets dull, you perform worse. One example of this would be on these shoes, the plastic in here is starting to get pretty dull. And these are three-year-old shoes. so. What you'd have to do is pretty soon you'd have to get a new set of shoes just because your performance is much worse when you have duller shoes. And I, tr I designed a way to either repl my original plan was to make it so it doesn't dull, but then I decided, how about if you just had interchangeable spike plates because it would cover, it would solve a lot more problems. So what I did <clears throat> is I started by taking a mold, a plaster Paris mold of this shoe, which is over there. And from that, I created a fiberglass resin cast. And then thanks to SmoothOn, who gave me a lot, of, a lot of things, they gave me a discount on their molding material. I used that to create multiple molds of the shoe. I then, using, a compute, using Autodesk Inventor, created three, three different types of spike plates. We have a sprinting one, more distance one, and this was just a flat contour spike plate, just to, for the a, a, approximate contour of a, what a spike plate would look like without any spikes on it. Then using that, I machined it out in the machining lab, machined it out, then covered it with some clay to start creating a design since I used the, I decided to go with a flat blank design. Once I did that, I took a mold of it using what SmoothOn gave me and ended up with this mold. After putting together this, what I, this mold and the mold of the bottom of the shoe, I put these two on top of each other, filled it with task, 13, task 14, 13 and 14, and then eventually what it resulted in is this, which had the contour of the shoe, so it would fit right in it. And it had the bottom that I was looking for. So a semi, it's hard to see, but the bottom has some ridges on it and a cross hatched area in the back is usually the design for like a braking when you go on your heels. The only problem I encountered was it was a little bit thick. So did a second attempt using a couple other materials to get the compression strength right and the hardness. And I got much thinner and I got approximately the design. I then, thank, thanks to 3M, they gave me some Velcro. I put some Velcro on the bottom of the shoe, right here, and on the back, and Velcro on what I made. And it made it so that I could put these two together. I tried running on them, and it works. And the continued pressure down on the shoe keeps the Velcro in place, even though it's not even over the entire shoe like it should be. And it makes it so the Velcro doesn't slip. It has some good traction, and then once you're done, you can just, it's a little bit difficult, but it's supposed to be, you can just take the Velcro off. This really solves the problem because when a track and field athlete, when you get, when your shoes get dull, you need a new set of shoes. And they can cost 60 to to $100. I know someone who stripped a spike in his shoes, which ruins your set of your spike plates because they strip the, right in there where the spike goes. They had to buy three sets of shoes in one season, which is about, they spent $150 more than they should have in a season. If that happened to someone, all they could do is they could, in my design, they could take off the spike plate and put on a new one. This also solves the issue for people who do multiple events because in here, like I showed you the different spike plates, the multiple events solves because sprinters, jumpers, distance, Throwers, pole vaulters, they all have different types of shoes, and this solves all of those issues. And I'm, I would assume like the spike plates would only cost around $8 because you would have to rearrange all of the industry. And by doing that, you have to in, take out some steps in how they do it. But you could use any current model spike plate. Like this Nike, if they wanted to, they could do that. They would just, this is done injection molding. They would put on the Velcro on it, and then they would have that exact same thing, so it would be for the same shoe. 
it, I also learned that it also solves the issue for trainers because if you've ever had a shoe in the back, the heel wears out or the bottom of it wears out and then your knees are hurting for shin splints, this solves the issue because you could put in the same design using Velcro, keep the same upper, if it wears out, take it off and put on a new one. So now you're reusing shoes. Instead of having to go out and buy a new pair of shoes or reuse those materials to make a new set, you just have to get a set of bottoms. And since the tops last much longer, it solves the issue. And that would only cost, maybe with the industry change, $30. There would be a markup, of course, for Nike and all the other New Balance, all those companies. But still, it would be a lot cheaper than buying a new set of shoes. Everything was sponsored for my project. Fleet Feet Sports sponsored all of the shoes. Smooth On sponsored the molding equipment. And they gave me discounts on the molding equipment. 3M gave me a bunch of Velcro. I also have to do a severe, th like, extreme thanks to all of the technical people at this unit high school because they gave me a computer that would run all of the crazy programming I did to design all of this. I was doing it in a program that are made for designing computer animated worlds for movies and I was using it for my three-dimensional scans of all of my shoes. But in, thanks to all of them, I was able to create a shoe that has interchangeable bottom, so you can go from sprinting to a distance one easily as taking, taking it off, put it, putting it back on. And if this was in retail, you'd have to go out to the store and buy it. You wouldn't have to bring your shoes to a cobbler if they got worn out or anything. You'd just go out, buy it, switch the, spike, switch the bottoms for track and field, the spike plates, and you would have just as new shoes, and that was, that's my project in its essence.